He'll paint your noose like an old man He's got you thinking about your death and you are frightened Hi guys to everyone, today uh, we have the huge honor to have with us Ted Aguilar from Death Angel. Hi Ted, first of all I want to start with an easy and common and maybe boring question. Okay. Let's speak up a little bit about Death Angel, of course introduce you and the current lineup. Okay, uh, do you have, okay. I'm Ted, I play <laughs> rhythm guitar in Death Angel and the current lineup would to be the lineup for the past 11 years would be me on rhythm guitar, Asagata on vocals, Rob Cavastani on lead guitar, yeah. Damien Sisson on bass, and Will Carroll on drums. Yeah, perfect. You, um, you joined the band in 2001, if I'm not wrong. But before, before speaking about the other album where you are involved, I wanted to ask you, in your opinion, to speak, and maybe if you want to do a quick review about the, the first three albums of The Changel before you join them. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the first three albums, I remember seeing Death Angel, what, 1987. It was on the Ultraviolence, the Ultra Ultraviolence yeah. tour. They did a video shoot for Voracious Souls in San Francisco. I went to that show. It was a uh, Death Angel, Violence, and uh, betray some, <laughs> Death, some band Death from... Angel and Violence? Wow, it's yeah. fun. This was, this was before Violence had Eternal Nightmare. They were Eternal. only on a demo. So wow, I saw that. I saw, it was a good show. I saw that show. And then I, I saw them on all albums, Frolic to the Park, and yeah. I saw them on Act 3. I mean, great. They were a great band then. They, they had a lot of energy. They had the yeah. songs. The show was crowded. And... They were getting bigger and bigger, then all yeah. of a sudden they had the accident and they broke up. Yeah, so, and coming back in 2001, Death Angel played in the Trash of Titans. For, of course, we knew for Alpine, Chuck, uh, Chuck Billy and Chuck Schuldiner. What about this festival? I mean, um, what do you remember of this festival? It was, it was actually pretty amazing, I mean, Uh, it was actually, yes, you're correct. It was a benefit for both Chucks. Yeah. And um, I, it was spearheaded by Chuck Billy first. Him and his friend Walter Morgan yeah. decided, well, his friend Walter goes, let's throw a festival for a benefit for Chuck. Because, you know, yeah. at the time, Chuck had, uh, it was diagnosed with cancer. Yeah. And their whole goal was to get all the old Bay Area bands back together. That's amazing. And, It, it was amazing, but and Death Angel was the last one to confirm because Death Angel didn't want to reform at all. They know. were, they were done. You they know, were they done. were already, they were already doing other projects and other bands, and it wasn't until Chuck Billy called Rob and said, oh, "Hey, wow. are you gonna do? Are you gonna do this for me or what?" And that's when they decided, okay, if we're gonna do this, we're gonna only do it one time. And we're gonna do it for Chuck. So uh, we did the show, and after that, here we are today. <laughs> so basically, it was like a, a way to coming back into the scene. We can say. Yeah, I guess. I guess. I mean, I was the a new good guy way. A good way. Yeah. A good way, of I course. Mean, yeah, something unfortunate, uh, yeah. you know, for, happened. But um, i was the new guy in the band so when yeah. we when we when we played the show I, i i remember looking at them and they had so much fun it looked like they missed it so so after that show they were like everyone was all excited and then then the offer started coming in hey you want to yeah. go do Dyna dynamo in holland or do you want to do a short tour in europe and we did that tour i think it was no mercy festival in 2003 And that's when Nuclear Blast came okay. to see us in. From that's amazing. and here we are today. It's <laughs> amazing. Your first album with them is uh, "The Art of Dying." 
what could uh-huh. tell about that album? Do you think that you brought new, you know, influences or sound into the band? No, 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 no. I was, like I said, I was kind of new, I'm new to the band. So it was really exciting to see at least the four original guys yeah. uh, write Death Angel music together. Because yes. it's been so long. It's been like 12 years since. Yeah, were, sure. Like, yeah. A long time. So, you know, I was always at the rehearsal. So I was just watching them write like, oh, that's how you write songs. Uh, wow. It's, that's, this- it's cool. There is a question that comes for me naturally. This wasn't written before. How it happened the meeting between you and the Tangel? Oh, I've 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 known them since the '80s. I used to, like I said, I go to their shows. I would yeah. see them at other band shows. I would see them at parties, and that's how I got to know them. To know them, yeah. Then, yeah, then you know, I got to know them even more when they broke up. When they had yeah. their other band, the organization. Yeah. So, but then I I played in local bands here in like uh, late '90s, early 2000s. Yeah. I I played in a, a band called Sift, and we used to play a lot with Rob, Mark, and Andy's other band, Swarm. They were a rock and roll band, so we we would always play together. Together, in the area. yeah. So when the time for Death Angel came, you know, the original uh, guitar player Gus Peppa was living in yeah. the Philippines at the time, and. They reached out to him. He just said, no, I don't want to do it. And they called me and I said, yeah, I want to do it. <laughs> I want to do it. And, and here I am talking to you today. Yeah, that's amazing. Also in 2008, it's been released uh, Killing Season, which is also uh, see the last time the participation of Dennis, Peppa and Andy Galeon. What about yeah. this period? And how was it when they left the band? It, it was it was hard, you know, when you have two original members yeah, leaving. Sure. It, it, sure. it, you know, especially when they've been together for so long and they decide to leave, you're like, ah, oh, I thought the band was over. I just said, okay, you know, just let me know what's going on. And yeah. it was actually Mark that talked to Rob and said, mm-hmm. we have to keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. That's so nice. then uh, we got Will and Damien and, you know, yeah. everything started to go you know yeah. started to go really well so and we're doing we did five no it four albums with them and one live album so wow so yeah. you come back then in uh, 2010 with the uh, rentless retribution we did which saw they actually line up so you see some that all this time has been um, brought in, in a, 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 we can say different of influences in the sound since the the beginning when you joined you saw yeah. some difference? Yeah, oh yeah, the difference is in, in the writing. Because, yeah. uh, you know, Andy and Dennis were, were songwriters too. Yeah. Then when they left and we got Will, all the songwriting duties were left to Rob. So Rob was right. actually write, writing to their strengths, yeah. their playing. Because it's, you know, both great drummers and bass players, but there's different styles. Yeah, so Rob, sure. had, Rob had to adjust you know, the, was the, writing to their style. Yeah, of course, so, he, he was trying and, to get, yeah. Yeah, and plus, you know, we went with uh, Jason Sukoff, who produced the last four albums, and his, he kind of helped us make more, I don't know, more, more, huh, more metal. More <laughs> metal. <laughs> yeah, sounding, as in the sound. Yes, in the know, sound, but, yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, you, we still, we, we still are Death Angel, but he just gave us, uh, like the sound that we were looking for for that time. For the time, yes. But also the Tangel, um, our protagonist of a, a documentary called Trash Trashumentary. What about, I mean, how does it feel to be like protagonist of a documentary? And it's uh, this documentary, how much is loyal to the real life of the Tangel? Could you repeat that again, please? I'm sorry. Um, I say that uh, the Tangel are the protagonist of uh, the a documentary called Trashumentary. Yeah. And how does it feel to be the protagonist of a documentary? Because it's something huge. And uh, it's a, the documentary is loyal to the real life of the band. Yeah. I mean, that's something we wanted to capture, you know? Yeah. I mean, originally it was just supposed to be live footage with behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. But then it kept, then uh, the person who filmed it, excuse me, uh, Tommy Jones, who did the whole mm-hmm. documentary, 
he goes, how about we start from the beginning all the way up to relentless retribution? And we're like, oh my God, that's going to be a long. So we had to find all these old footage and do a lot of interviews. It's amazing. I think the documentary turned out really well. You know, yeah. it, it starts from the very beginning up until the, all, the current lineup. It's so all, yeah. it's good. I like and, I, it. and I think it's helpful for the fans that don't know all the story of the band. They can they can just watch it and have like a completely story of the band, uh, just watching like a movie. For yeah, example. basically, yeah. it's a long yeah. documentary, but it, it's good. It, it you know we're only gonna do it once. We're not gonna do another one. We I think we already. <laughs> this is did the only one, one that will be. <laughs> only one. Your uh, your last album is Humanicide. What can yes. you tell about this album? It's a, uh, it's a great album. <laughs> I think, um, I think you could hear, it's the album where you could hear everyone, meaning you could hear everyone's influences. You could hear, when you hear the drum, you know, you know, it's Will, you can hear the bass, you know, it's that's Damien. Important. Yeah. Yeah. It's important. You can tell, oh, wow. It's, it sounds like a band that's been together for 10 years, the same lineup. And so also every, kept like, their influences like joining in one. Joining in one. You yeah. Know, so you could hear everyone. Where the other albums are great, don't get me wrong, but like Relentless Retribution, it was Will and Damien's first time. So they were starting to get, we were starting to get to know each other. To have you know? the feeling. Like, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Like we, you know, in the studio, then touring. Then yeah. The more, the more albums you do, the more comfortable you get with each other. Of so course, and, you kind of, and you, and you hear that in, Humanicide, where everyone is just so comfortable with yeah, each other, the sure. instruments and the music, and I think it's it's a great great representation of That's Death amazing. Angel today. That's amazing. And also this year, this year you released an acoustic album. Why this choice? Well, an acoustic EP, we can say maybe it's more correct. Yeah. How this choice? And what about the composition behind behind it? Oh, okay. Well, um, well, as you know, with the pandemic. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I know it's very well from Italy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when we here and when the pandemic started, you know, of course, you couldn't leave really. Yeah. So um, it was hard for the f all five of us yeah. to see each other to play because one, at the time, Will was in the hospital. He had the virus, um, and. Um, Damien lives in Mexico <laughs> oh and, uh, yeah and you know me and Rob we live not that far from each other but we couldn't see each other so and Rob was in the mood to play some acoustic you know yeah. Rob that's Rob's passion he loves you know acoustic Light guitar acoustic. He, yeah. he loves playing it so he had the idea of like I want to do Under Pressure by Queen and David mm -hmm. Bowie and he wrote a new acoustic song and he wanted to do room with a view he just wanted to play some acoustic okay. just to get it out of his system like oh, yeah I'm, i'm i'm in the mood for this let's just do it. i want to i want to record these music this music acoustic release it let it go and get back to death Angel. yes because also it's a good thing for the fan add something to listen or something new to listen especially yes exactly and you know yeah. rob's always rob's always writing so he at that period of time yeah he was he was in an acoustic mood uh mood yeah so <laughs> in acoustic with, mood. yeah when you're when you're a musician and you're in that mood you just gotta let let him do it and yeah. let it get get out of him and you know yeah there you go sure And if you have to choose one album, of course, that you love mostly, or maybe you enjoy mostly playing live of the Tangel, well, which will which will it be? Ooh, that's a hard one because all the albums are good. <laughs> I love. I mean, I we 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 play at least one song from each album, but we're yeah. mainly focusing on the new stuff. Yeah, but sure. every now and then, especially on our when we do our Christmas shows here in San Francisco, we usually, oh. you know play songs we don't normally play on tour <laughs> but if you're gonna put a gun to my head i'd, I'd probably I, i'd i'd like to play act three act all of three. it yeah that's I like amazing i love that album that's my your, favorite your favorite death album. angel album in from from the first three you know from the original for, for lineup the, that's yes, my favorite yes and, and from where this, yes now relentless 
right, right. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. Of course, um, the Tangel are like an iconic, an iconic fresh metal band in the Bay Area. But what do you think about the other band from the Bay Area of today? So, so contemporary thrash metal band. Like Testament, Exodus, The new one. The new one. The new one the that is... The newer thrash, thrash band. Yes, oh, the, oh. because we have this new way of thrash metal. We yeah. will... I mean, we'll... there's um, a lot of them are from Southern California. There's a yeah. few up here like um, that, that are really good, like Hatriot which is uh, Zetro from Exodus, his son's band oh. is really good. And there's another like, uh, uh, they're like thrash new wave of British heavy metal. From yes. Uh, Hellfire. Hellfire. Hellfire, yeah, they're a good band. But you know what, I mean, I haven't been really keeping in touch of what's going on in the Bay Area the as Nevada. far as new bands, but I see and hear a lot of them from Southern California, right. like, Warbringer, X Warbringer, it's even John Cavill. It's it's amazing. It's like the Shakespeare of uh, I don't know is when he's when he's seeing when he speak. And it's it's amazing. Yeah, Warbringer is a great band. Yeah. Yeah, you got them. You got X Mortis, and you know there was Holy Grail. There's so many bands in Southern California, but not so much up in the Bay Area. Yeah, that I, you know. I think some bands are from Germany. There are take inspiration from the trash of Bay Area. The you know the new this new guy with skateboard with skateboarding is in just trying to get inspiration from from the older time with the skateboarding, the hats. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah the, there are the, these the tennis shoes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean I mean there's there's some good uh European bands that I yeah. like that. I mean you know like Suicidal Angels. Yeah. It's really and good. And also you know good. we've talked We've toured with a band from Belgium, uh, Evil Invaders. Evil Invaders, they are yeah. awesome. They are young, but the singer yeah. is freaking awesome. I yeah. interviewed them and he is really humble and young and it's almost cute. <laughs> and also, yeah, yeah. Yes, and also there is a, a, a good band from Germany called Dust Bolt. They yes, they're from looking, Munich. Yeah, they look exactly like a band from the Bay Area. If you if you saw if you see them, you don't think they are from Germany. Yeah. They are completely from an from they are from the past, not from the present. Yeah, yeah there's 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 I remember Dust Bolt. We played with them. Then, then I said Suicidal Angels, Evil Invaders. There's one band I think. Uh, there's one band from Italy where we toured quite a bit with. Uh, really, from Italy? Extrema. Extrema! Oh my God! I love yeah. older band. It's yeah. an old band from me. I don't know if they play anymore, but they I'm are. Not sure, but they were more uh, like some metal core, something crossover, more like that than trash metal. Yeah, they were like yeah. Pantera. Like yeah, Pantera. exactly. I just group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's. Yeah. I I have no idea that the YouTuber with Extrema. Oh one. yeah, I know. I know a couple of those guys. They're fun. You know, they're good yeah. guys. Yes. Also, um, I wanted to ask the influences of the Tangel, because of course wow. anyone has influences. But in general, what do you think they are musical influences of the Tangels? Well, we, there's a lot of there's a lot of bands that we all like equally. Let's say okay. like uh, Old Scorpions, Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, Iron Maiden, Judas Priest. You know all that stuff and Metallica as well, Slayer. Oh, sure. But we also like, uh, you know, like Robin Mark and uh, Will, they love Kiss, you know. Kiss. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, we have all, I mean, we share the same influences like what yeah. I just told you, but we also like totally different styles of music outside of heavy metal and rock, for of example. Course. You know, me, Mark and Rob share the same love for Adele. Um, great. And me and Rob share the same love for Bruno Mars. Uh, Damien likes Kanye West. <laughs> but that, that, that's and, amazing because it's also been me listening new stuff and it doesn't have to be rock or metal. It could be any no. type of music. For any example, music, any... I'm a, a fan of Dolly Parton. So. <laughs> okay, yeah. Same, same with Mark. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he likes Dolly yeah. Parton too. That's yeah. fun. Oh, he loves. So he loves. So yeah, that. we all listen. We all listen yeah. to different styles of music, and that that kind of uh, blends into what yeah. we write. So and it's good. 
I also know that you collaborated with Chris Contos. Chris Contos is maybe one of the biggest, you can say, drummer, musician. He played in so many bands. How is playing yeah. with Chris Contos? I mean, I never played with him. Rob and Mark played with him because Chris Contos yes. in 1991 played drums for Death Angel for one tour in one, Japan. Two. That's well, that's when uh, Andy had the accident and yeah. he couldn't play. So Chris Contos uh, filled in. But I've seen Chris Contos play. He's a great drummer, yeah. an amazing drummer. That first uh, Machine Head record is awesome. Uh, <laughs> he's a machine. Awesome. A drum, yeah, a drum human machine, we can say. Yeah. A drumming machine with a lot of uh, soul, with a lot of, you know, yes, uh, uh, groovy express, stuff. Yes, also expressing his feeling through the, the, the instrument, exactly. which is uh, all the musicians does, and most of the musicians does. Speaking about you, that it's your turn now. We, we My are turn? Doing, yeah, we are doing an interview. Okay, but I know that you interview musician as me. So I wanted to ask you, How, I mean, how this decision of interviewing musicians and how does it feel to be a musician and interview other musicians? Well, first and foremost, the, the, the people I've interviewed on my live mm -hmm. stream, alive and streaming, I'm a fan of. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm a music fan too. So I, it, the reason why I did this is when the pandemic happened, yeah. I was thinking how, how could we or you know, me or the band uh, stay connected with our fans you know since the things no that i saw yeah yeah since there's no live shows no nothing yeah. going on so i you know decided to do this and started to interview people that i want to interview like that i'm a fan of because yeah you know, i don't know if you if you saw some of it like i yeah. interviewed scott scott from mordred i interviewed mordred. Him. <laughs> yeah. and i love i love their music so i was yeah, like and I, you know i asked I ask questions like, how did you do this? I love that, <laughs> you know, I, I, I just they wanted are to... Innovative. They are you know, always being innovative. And there is it also is. Their, their, their new album, Black Parade, I think, coming out. So, yeah. yeah. It's a, they're a great band. They're yeah. a great band. Very I original. Know. Yeah. Uh, a lot of styles. They mixed a lot of styles yeah. perfectly. So, yeah. And, And yeah, keep on going. Go ahead. Go ahead, your turn. <laughs> I was saying there is some particular interview that you, you you like, not you like most, but maybe you remember mostly with pleasure that, or maybe you are more, you have fun, you have some, you know, funnier moments than other ones. Oh yeah, well, it, it all depends on the person I, who I interview. Like, okay, I've had I had fun with Chris Contos. <laughs> Uh, that was fun because uh, you know I'm a I'm a fan of his drumming and Machine Head's first album, and also a yep. fan of his other other bands, uh, his punk rock band Verbal Abuse. Um, I also had a good time with uh, who did I had Possess Jeff Becerra. You I know, will, I yeah, was, huge. It was fun with him. The and father I, I also, of death metal. Yeah, the father of death metal. Yeah, and I also had a good time with Denko Jones. Danko Jones, oh my God, I was listening to him when I was a teenager. I remember him. He's a, yeah, so yeah, he's a man. He's a good friend of ours, and you know we're, we're both fans of each other, so we both uh, like to I, like, like, be little little girls when we talk about music. It's <laughs> amazing when you are a musician or in any just uh, you interview someone someone that is fan of you and you are fan of the other the other yeah. musician. It's it's a uh, it's it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, because we we pro you probably make both questions together like. I make a question to you, you make a question to me, so it became a double interview like that. Yeah, that's that's what I'm trying to do, more like a conversation. Let's yes. Have a conversation and yes, this talk, is talk this is the it. best way. This is the best way of having yeah. an interview. Uh, that's that the, the classical questions, question answer, question answer. It's always always better having a conversation. Yeah, um, it's better instead of being, you know, because yeah. I've done quite I've done quite a few interviews, and there's some interviews where it's. Um, very uh, uh how very would you say that technical i don't know very no. um well stiff <laughs> you know like 
Yeah, very... oh my god, I have you know? it. I have a few, but I don't want to make names, but I have some okay. few. Just, you know, you met the you you do the question, you get the answer. And you see the 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 musician looking at you and you said, "Oh my god, what am I supposed to do now? I have the Exactly. <laughs> so you try to find or I don't know, invent another another questions. Yeah. And yeah, also so, uh, Yeah. So that yeah, my my live stream. I, I try to I, I do my best to make it more comfortable. Let's just yeah. have a good time. Let's just talk. Yeah, you can ask talk. ask me anything. I'll ask you anything, and let's just yeah. see where it goes. You know. Yeah, this is the best things. And you you mentioned that you have uh, another one for to Saturday. Tomorrow, which Tomorrow. is uh, Sam Dunn. He works mm -hmm. for Banger Films. He did the Iron Maiden documentary Six Six Six, and he did the Rush. <laughs> documentary beyond the lighted stage he also did headbangers journey the metal evolution i mean as uh, someone a huge producer yeah that yeah, would be it would be you will have i think a lot of questions ready oh, for I him will. And, i'm ready and for him you're you're like you will have like two hours of interview because if i were if i were in your shoes i don't know where to start for asking yeah because, so i'm yeah. excited to interview him because you know he i love the iron maiden documentary flight 666 i love the rush documentary i also like uh headbangers journey how he talks about all the metal yeah you know everything it's amazing so I yeah wanna, i want to pick his brains yes you know. because also you want to i think i also understand how is a documentary is done exactly it is this is what i'm trying to do as a um, as webzine i'm trying we are trying to do a documentary about the women of the sunset strip okay because everyone speak about the band but what about the women of the sunset strip yeah what about i want to know yeah so we are <laughs> trying to do something like that you know to get some for example the cherry pie or warrant bobby brown i think some yeah some women, some wife or some musician just asking to different women some stripper just ask them how they see this uh, this era, this um, this you can see this era because it was an era the Sansa Strip. Also, we need footage, or, or original footage, and this means contact, of course, you know, the owner and whatever. And yeah. uh, it's an hard work and also expensive work, but yeah, it is. But it's also good to get a different yes perspective because like you yes. said everyone knows about the bands the warrants yes. the pretty boy floyd's point they know that oh, i love pretty boy floyd yeah oh, the electric boys with electric toys is my electric favorite. boys with, yeah I love, I love that i love that song i yeah. always put it yes i th this is my music this is what this is how i get in touch and, and my friendship with uh, daniel started because we during an interview we agreed about john sykes the guitarist Mm -hmm. With that, we bought love and we started <laughs> this sort of uh, John Fax fan club, <laughs> secret fan club. Oh, yeah. But my favorite, one of my uh, bands that I, I'm listening to a lot nowadays would happen to be... Our core superstar. That's, a, that's an amazing... Love it. That's amazing. That's amazing. I'm more from White Snake, like the time more. Okay. I, I'm a woman. I love ballad. I have to be honest. So I love. Oh, ballad. I do too. You love ballad as well. Oh, I love. Yeah, Your favorite love ballad. Ballads. Your favorite ballad. Wow. <laughs> uh, wow. I probably have to go with uh, Skid Row's "I Remember You." That's the, one of the classical. Yeah. Yeah. That that period of Skid Row was amazing and they were at, everywhere, they were everywhere. I mean, uh, okay. there are there were a tons of bands on the Sunset Strip that pr probably most of people never, they didn't know, I they will never know. This is why I want to yeah. make this documentary, also for bringing more people. For example, some months ago, I interviewed Keith St. John. This is um, a, for a former member of um, Kingdom Come, the actual singer. Oh, he also yeah. he has a, a band with um, the Doug Aldrich from White Snake. He was uh, in Montrose. I mean, it was you know a guy from New York that played like in a lot of band in a Sunset Strip. And when I made this interview, it was all electrified, like asking, "What about? Tell me about the Sunset Strip. What happened? What happened? What happened?" Because I want to know that things. And he just was telling me that. And it, it's, this is the, the beautiful things because they tell you the story that you want to hear. 
that he saw, for example, the first, the, the starting uh, of Mr. Big, for example. They saw his band okay. jamming, and so he's an amazing guitarist, uh, bass player, and they were Mr. Big. And I was like, with my mouth up, with my mouth open, like, really? Like, I mean, you interview someone that lived that period, and for me, it's yeah. like, like, wow. And this is also that I wanted to ask you that this is a question that Dennis suggested me. Okay. So he suggested me also, and I wanted to know, of course, also, what uh, does it mean to Bay Area for you? Oh, it means, it means a lot to me. Uh, uh, it feels like a sense of, I mean, I was born and raised here in the Bay Area, so yeah. it's, it's home, you know? I mean, yeah. even no matter where I travel around the world, I've seen many, many great places, fortunate uh, Italy as well, you know, and um, but coming to back to the Bay Area, it just it, it just feels yeah. like home, you know, you and feel, I oh, and I home. see and <laughs> I think it's my it's my point of view. You are from the other side, so you have to confirm to confirm if it's a right or not interviewing. Um, I probably interviewed most of the band from like you see Exorder, Violence, Forbidden, uh, Mordred. It seems like a big family. Because I saw all the time, uh, I don't know, uh, Daniel Ethan, da da Daniel speaking with David White, making jokes, and then with uh, uh, Martin Matanzeri, and I see all these people talking, and also me speaking with them, and, it's, and, I, and I saw so this difference from, uh, for example, that, that metal scene, they are more like, uh, of course, I think they are knew all each other, but I saw this kind of uh, union, like a big family in the Bay Area. Okay, yeah, it, it, it is true. Like, you know, when we when we were having shows and when you could go out and when we're out and about, sometimes I do run into Scott from Mordred or Craig from Forbidden. Actually, me yeah. and Craig, live in, we live in the same city. So we, yeah. we sometimes we see each other, we just talk, how are you, how's the family, blah, 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 talk about the band, okay, see yeah. you later. You know, but it, 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 it is like family and when we see each other, it's like, hey. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. It's awesome. And I want also to ask you the, your project. You, you, you mentioned a band before joining that, the Tangel. What about mm -hmm. this, this band? It's not around no more, but it was, it was, a, it was like kind of like a new Beton band. It was like a little bit of Godsmack, Alice in Chains yeah. and Neurosis all in one like some so, grand just some grand some yeah yeah it was it wasn't thrash metal at all it was more like it was it was i would probably consider it a little new metal-ish in a new way metal, you know? yeah yeah but then you know i was doing that for a bit until death angel called and death angel took up a lot and of you my said time, just have so. bye and just you fly went straight yeah, to the yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so that's what yeah I that's amazing and speaking about you your personal influences we speak a little we spoke a little about I mean, some bands we you listen but if you have for example to pick up go straight to be more specific five albums that influenced you since you were a child wow. until today <laughs> well, oh, uh, wow influence that's so five nice. albums i will keep the count <laughs> i could uh, well i could at least get my number one would be uh, Master of Puppets. Okay. That's the one. Um, metal would, uh, I would say Slayer's Raid and Blood. Raid and Blood, yeah. Uh, wow, that's a long, because there's so many influences. Yeah. Oh, so many, so many. Uh, Tom Petty, Long, Petty. Long After Dark. Okay. Yeah, that's three. Uh, that's two. I'm gonna have, no three. I gave you three. Yeah. Tom Petty, Slayer, Metallica. Um, I would say four would be Judas Priest, Screaming for Vengeance. Screaming for Vengeance. Another one. Another one would be. Probably the first Skid Row album. 
I agree. I agree with okay. this one. <laughs> I agree with all of one, but this I agree with mostly. And during this pandemic, I mean, because we are still on this pandemic, which are your plans? Yeah, I mean, your personal plans as musician. Um, well, I mean, right now the bands, you know, after this interview, I got to go to rehearsal because we're <laughs> yeah. rehearsing for our Christmas show, which we're going to stream live. Really Decem amazing. December, December 19th and 20th, we're going to stream two nights of our Christmas show. So that's amazing. All the tickets are on our website, deathangel.us. All the info is there. That's and, um, amazing. That's, that's it for this year. Um, next yeah. year, we're not sure yet, but we're all doing our own thing. We, you know, it's good to be home and yeah. you know reconnect with home we're, we're writing music slowly but surely but um as of now we don't know what the new year is going to be about it's right now yeah. we're just finishing finishing off 2020 with these two yeah. shows and enjoy the holidays and we'll see what happens in 2021. yes because this pandemic i also <laughs> think that brings the human you can say the human being to be more connected with their soul with the souls with with mm -hmm. all these around him in for for other people that are fortunate that lives near nature for example with nature discovering the simple uh, simple things even listen for example um and a uh, music that you usually maybe listen music driving driving the car and maybe yeah. listen home with a uh, with headphones just listening music and but even for meditation i don't know i i do meditation so even for people who like to do this stuff you 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 i think you are finding people are finding more themselves now than in the other. Yes, exactly, because you had enough time to spend at home yes. and not do anything and kind of reconnect of with yourself course, and of course. With, with your loved ones and watch enough, a lot of Netflix. <laughs> yeah, watch so many. I don't know, I'm starting with Amazon Prime now because Netflix is done. I don't have oh. anything to watch. <laughs> your favorite show of Netflix, go on, say it's one. Change about uh, change the topic. Change, speaking about movies, <laughs> I've watched a lot of shows on Netflix recently. I don't know. I all like them, but I I, I miss I miss Game of Thrones. You don't you don't see it all Game of Thrones. I, I I saw all of it. I just miss it because there's no more Game of Thrones. But I mean, yes. I've been watching a lot of um. There's some some documentary stuff yeah. I watch like political documentaries or yeah a lot you know uh thrillers yeah there are a lot there are uh, many yeah a lot uh, or serial killers or yeah you know, yeah about serial killers there is one yeah. about ted bundy there is a, a tapes of ted Bundy tapes of yeah something like that that was good yeah that was really good and so. and, and is it also um, i don't know creepy listening his, his voice in the tapes you like oh my god is innocent or not oh my god what is going on here yeah, yeah so I've, I've watched i mean there's a lot of shows that i like there's not one particular that's my favorite but you know i just find something that i'm interested you like, in and, yeah. I'll just, and i'll just watch it of yeah. course you're united states you have more choice than us in italy we have few shows few shows so for example if i googled appears netflix.com and i'm what the hell go to rent some tape i don't know or watch it on streaming because i can see it on netflix because you have yeah. more choice than us yeah yes we do yes we do every time i'm <laughs> yeah when i'm in in tour in europe and i try to watch netflix i there can't is, get a lot of i'm like oh there's so. nothing even because i didn't i, I don't watch tvs in in italian i watch everything from in, in english in american okay so i'm okay. used to to see it so i said please there is a way that my i can connect my account to the american account i don't want to do it yeah i have to move yep. one day i will move yeah no yeah. But, uh, this is the things that i said to danny one day i will move because yeah. i have more more, more friends in san francisco than here so oh probably. yeah it's yeah. uh you should visit san francisco it's nice it's, yeah it's nice yeah yes yeah i have really uh, seriously i have more people there than here so i um, yeah also one of my de dear friend of mine she's a singer of a, a band called chastain she's her name is leather oh leone oh my god chastain i haven't heard that name in a long time you know time. leather leone she's oh, my I... my inspiration and um okay i'm planning a tour with her in europe 
So we speak all the time. I made like 10,000 of interviews. She's like a strength of nature when you speak with her and you close the conversation and you're like, oh my God, you like electri electrify in the, yeah. So I have her in San Francisco and because now speaking about more than one year, you became friend. We like, we, we spoke about women's stuff also. So it's not about music, but just same were fucking good. They've just same was an amazing guitarist. and. Your guitar, since you are a guitar player, which is your your guitar in musician, guitar player influences? I mean, when you are a kid, a number, teenager, the number one guy, James Hetfield. James Hetfield. Yeah. That straight. That, that. That's, that's the man. That's the man. That, he's like the heavy metal superhero, <laughs> you know. Daniel White was disappointed. He said, he said to me, John Sykes, and then he said, Doug Percy. And I was, you have to take a decision, man. You can have 10,000 guitarists. You have to choose one. You said one. He yeah. said, yeah, but also Doug Percy is good as well. Doug Percy from Old Heathen? Yeah, I interviewed oh, him. Yeah, yeah I interviewed okay. him. He's a very uh, humble person. He's really nice. Yeah. Yeah. I interview everyone. I, 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 sometimes I'm confused and I say, you are from Exorda, from Violet, where, who played in who? <laughs> sometimes I have to make I, a little... I saw, I saw your interviews with really? Craig and Sean and uh, <laughs> Danny. They were, they were good interviews. Good with interviews. The, the ones with Danny is the funniest. He's yeah. the funniest because the guy who was doing the interview with me, instead of saying DJ, he said this jockey and then he answered, yeah. oh my God, I didn't hear this word in, in an ages because... I know, I, I, I laughed at that. I go, who says this jockey? It's <laughs> a DJ. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was a good... Fun. Yes, yes. That was, a, that was good interviews. I, I still have to watch more like... Uh, you had Heathen, I didn't watch that. Yes, one. I had Heathen. Oh. Um, don't watch it, Warbringer. It was with the old team and it's terrible. It was one of the first one. I want to interview again John Kivo and make a you okay. know, better interview because he, I, I didn't give him um, the credit and you know the, the shows that he respect. I mean, I want yeah. to give him more, more, more views. Do the things it was in my in the beginning. So at the beginning, you have to struggle about what program you use. If you use a yeah. phones, computer, I was like, what am I supposed to do now? Because I were used to interview band <clears throat> in the festival. So I have my camera, okay. everything's planned. But since I am um, I, I'm home from this pandemic, I have to start to learn to use Zoom and whatever. Yeah. Blah, blah. And now I understand that Zoom is better than Skype, for example. Of course. Because I, I, I had an interview this afternoon with um, a band called Leaves Eyes. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, with the, with, the, with, with the singer that is also the singer of Atrocity, this uh, that metal band. Alex? Yeah. Kroll? Yeah, Alex yeah. Kroll. Yeah. yeah. I had an interview with him uh, at five four hours ago and it was with okay. Skype and I was like oh my god I want zoom because I, I we I don't like when we are put together I prefer when people speak see, see me and then when the, the musician answer see the answer or maybe yeah. something mixed you know something more fun and it was and, and also I noticed the Skype as bad quality video and audio sometimes yeah. zoom yeah. no and also is uh, lighter you can you can edit that fastly because yeah. I all the time edit the interview and yeah this I had this interview you know Alex Alex Kroll yeah it's a yeah. it's a really huge uh, musician in fact today yeah. I said oh my god today I had this two huge interview it was like I'm confused I don't want to make the wrong question asking you That's what true. about Vikings metal <laughs> and asking to him what about Trish Bay Area yeah yeah wow well you're doing well Thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> so, um, before saying uh, uh, leaving a message to the Tangel fans, just leaving a message to Danny, <laughs> since we both know them. A greetings to Danny. Yeah, Danny. greetings to Danny White. I, I you know, I, I, I admire his guitar playing, his songwriting, his band, and um, he's a good guy, really yeah. good guy. I, actually, um, I have a demo tape of his band in 1986 that when I see him next time, I'm going to have him sign it. He was in a band called Mercy. Ask him about Mercenary. 
next time. I will, I will I'll ask him. I will ask him. I will text him. I will text him in a few. Mercenary. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just say, I heard about mercenary. And you'll <laughs> no, see. He also has this band that they play like swing, something like rodeo, swing, country music. I don't know if you saw this band. Oh. Ask, no, a, but... ask about this band. He sent oh, me some okay, stuff, you... we in country, that it's, it's good. Since like the Western okay. movie to listen, it's good. Okay. So we have both ask, to do a question. Yeah, ask him about Mercenary. I'll bet you it'll blow his mind. He'll be all, <laughs> how did you hear about that? <laughs> I would do it for sure. Yeah, he'll probably go, how did you know about that? And I said, I, oh, I, said, oh, I just, uh, just I found the tape between my shoes, between my clothes. Uh, my closet. Yeah. He will, he'll, un he'll, he will understand where it came from. And then he'll yeah, he'll understand. He'll be all, <laughs> yeah, Ted probably told her. Yeah, you know. Yes. So just a message to the Tangled fans and our followers. Oh, oh. Uh, I just want to say thank you for all the support. We want to thank all the fans around the world, Italy, everywhere, yeah. for all the support. You know, we couldn't do it without you. Hopefully, when things open up, we'll get back out there and really play hope. some live, live music will happen again. And we can't wait to play thrash metal to everyone. Again, we're, we're missing it. And uh, we yeah. hope everyone's safe and well. Thank you so much, Ted. It was really a pleasure and a fun interview. And, and, and I was sure there would be more like a touchy chat than, than an interview. Because we both interview and in the end, we, we end up speaking like, we are done of interviewing it's time to yes. speaking yes well maybe hopefully next time when we if we ever play italy what city are you from palermo sicily from the south by rome in south i'm uh, in an island sicily oh you're in sicily yeah wow Wow. Yeah, wow it... for a certain time. Um, it's wow for the food, for the for the sea, for the, the, the landscapes, but it's not wow for the cleaning of the street, the condition of the uh, street. It's like to be in um, the Eastern Europe. <laughs> oh, but do you get a lot of bands in Sicily? A we have a, a, that metal band. We had oh. a, a huge period of trash metal band, really good, that could be really playing in all the Europe, but, you know, People, we were young, people grew up just at family, move on. And uh, now we are also only extreme metal. And uh, I don't have nothing contrary of extreme metal. I like it, but I think you have to do something new. And uh, here there are no, if you are, for example, um, I don't know, an heavy metal, you can play here. In fact, I'm not, I'm Sula mm -hmm. Leone. I'm just trying to play, to make some gigs in Rome on okay. Milan. Even if I wanted to do something in Sicily, people will come, but it's a small circle and everyone yes. listened to extreme metal. Of course, they knew everything about trash metal. They knew everything about everything, but they are the bands that play are all that metal, black metal. I don't know why, I don't know why. <laughs> For this, I told you, most of my friends are just gone. And I said, okay, next time I will last, I will move in a, in in the in the light in the light in California. I don't like too much LA. I prefer San Francisco. I can I go to the East Coast because they say the East Coast is from San Francisco to Portland. They say this is the beautiful road to do with the yeah. car. Mm -hmm. And I'm it's like eight hour I think of driving. Yes. Yes, exactly. I, I started and I wanted to do it because I could have a job offer in Portland maybe maybe maybe. So oh, that's a You'll like it in Portland and San Francisco. That drive is beautiful. Yes. Very beautiful. Yes, it's so. amazing. So thank you so much. And let's hope to see you soon. And uh, let's keep in touch, especially. Will do. Thank you. I had fun. Me too as well. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dad. Have a good day and rehearsal. Ciao. Bye. Thank you. Ciao. <laughs> Tricks that he has turned in. He'll speak, but 
But you gotta believe there's only trouble 